Hello Cornerstone Kids and welcome to Kids Church. My name is Miss Rachel and I am so excited that you are here with me today. Today I'm in the corner house thinking about all of you and we are talking about something that doesn't sound very exciting. What? Why would we want to talk about something that's not very exciting? Well, the lesson for today is called Faithful in Hard Times. Ugh. Miss Rachel, why would we want to talk about hard times? Can't we just think about all of the good things that happen in life? And I would say, yes, of course, we have so many things to be thankful for. We have so many uh, wonderful things that God gave us. But there are definitely going to be times in our lives and in your parents' lives and in your grandparents' lives and in your neighbors' lives and in your friends' lives that we would think are hard. It's hard to live life because not every day is great. Not every day is perfect. And not every day is faced with all fun and games, right? Sometimes hard things happen in our lives. And we might wanna say, why is this happening? Why does God want this to happen to me? Can't things just be easy? Well, that's the question that Peter is going to wrestle with today as he talks to the believers in the early church. We're gonna start with something of a fun demonstration, okay? So what I have here looks like a stone. And in fact, it is, it's a piece of a rock. But this piece of a rock is very special because it's actually a geode. Does anybody know what a geode is? Well, a geode is, looks very different on the inside than it does on the outside. And in fact, if you break it open, you will see that the inside looks a lot better than the outside. So I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna go find a hammer and I am going to come back and we will break open this geode to see what it looks like on the inside and to ask, what does this have to do with today's lesson? Okay, I'm back. I've got a hammer and I've got the geode and I'm gonna use this hard surface, which is a counter in the kid's corner house and we're going to break open this geode. Now, what does this have to do with hard times? Well, when you put pressure on this geode, when I take the hammer and smash it, it's kind of like pressure in our life. When something bad happens, it's like, it's, it's sma it feels almost like it's a hammer that's hitting us. It's so hard, it's difficult, um, but what's inside of us if we have Jesus inside of us and we have the Holy Spirit, like what we've been talking about, that when the pressure comes or the hammer hits, we break open, we'll be able to see what's on the inside, which is the goodness and the glory of the Lord, right? Because we have Jesus and when bad things happen, that we have him inside and that's where the beauty and that's where the joy comes from. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera down here. There's my hammer. And I'll move that. Here is, I have a, a towel here so it doesn't go everywhere. I'm gonna fold it up. Now let's see. Do you think I'll be able to do it on one crack or I think it'll take a couple? Let's see. Okay, it's done. Oh, it did break. Two hits and I have my geode. All right, let's see. Hold it up to the camera. See how the inside is completely different. This is a, looks like a white sparkly geode. So that piece, very different from what it looked like on the outside. The beauty that was inside could only be seen after the hammer was used to hit it. Now there's geodes with all different colors. The one I chose happens to be white, but I've seen them with purple and blue and sparkly and just completely beautiful. So as we go into today's lesson, 
And as we talk about hard times, let's think about that geode. Think about what's inside of us, that something happens to us. What would come out? Would people be able to see Jesus inside of us? All right, let's go to the story and let's see what Peter has to say about hard times. In the early church, Jesus' followers faced persecution. The disciples told others about Jesus, but some people did not like what they were saying. Those people mistreated the believers because of their faith, and many believers were forced to leave their homes and go to different cities. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, wrote a letter to encourage them. Peter was a leader in the church, and he wanted to help these believers be faithful in hard times. Peter said, praise God. He is merciful and given us new life. We have hope because of Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. Peter reminded believers that because we are children of God, we have blessings in heaven that cannot be taken away or destroyed. We rejoice in this promise, even though we face suffering in this life. When hard times happen, God is honored as we trust him by faith. Peter also wrote, Hope in Jesus and be holy. God is your Father. Live in a way that shows Him respect. Peter reminded the believers that before they trusted in Jesus, they lived however they wanted. Jesus gave His life to save them so they could have a better life, true life, through His Word. Peter said, This world is not your home. Do not live like people around you who do wrong things. Instead, do what is good. Live as servants of God. Show love and respect to everyone. Others will see your good works and give glory to God. Jesus gave us an example to follow. He suffered for us, dying for our sins so that we could live for what is right. Before we were like lost sheep, now Jesus is our shepherd. The Bible says Christians will suffer for following Jesus. Peter encouraged believers who faced persecution for their faith. Through suffering, God can make us more like His Son. Jesus gives us hope and true life so we can live joyfully for Him, even in hard times. Okay, so we saw that video. The hard times that were happening for the church at that time was they were facing persecution. Persecution is a big word, um, but it means that they were facing anger and people were being violent towards them and they were being bullied by outside people who did not like Jesus or what the church was doing. Now, why? The church was amazing and Jesus was so good, but still, People might not like something, even if it's very good. Maybe they're confused. If you don't, they, maybe they didn't understand. So Peter and the church faced a lot of persecution and that was a hard time for them. But in our lives, even if we do not face persecution like that about going to church, we might have hard times. So when Peter talks about that, we can say, yeah, this was hard for me. In your head, think of something that's a hard time. Hmm. Think carefully, maybe we'll come up with a couple. All right, so here is one example of a hard time. I'll write a couple up here so that you can see them. So maybe, a bad grade on a test. Or, have you ever really worked hard on something and then realize that you didn't submit it on time and then you didn't get credit for it or something like that. Or you got a bad grade because you thought the test was gonna be about something or the paper or the assignment was about one thing and you were confused and you got a bad grade. Oh, it's so frustrating and hard. That could be a hard time. How about What if someone is sick? Someone that you know, or someone that you love, someone in your family is sick. Maybe they're sick that they're in the hospital. Maybe it's just something small. Maybe it's something big. That's a hard time for you as well 
as that other person. All right, let's think of a different hard time. Maybe your, maybe your family needs more money. Maybe you're struggling with that. Maybe you're, um, maybe they're the job or something that was helping your family have enough money. Maybe that just went away and now you don't have enough money. That's a hard, hard time. Maybe there's, A bully. Maybe there's a bully that is constantly making fun of you or just giving you a hard time about something. Those are all things that in our lives can easily be hard times and you might have 10 more on the tip of your tongue. Maybe you're having trouble sleeping or maybe your stomach has been upset or maybe someone you know lost somebody. Um, all of those are things that could be hard times. But Peter gives us some really good information when he is talking about that. He said one thing that I would like to talk about a little bit that he said, this world is not our home. What does that mean? This world is not our home. My home is in this world. I'm, my home, I, I live in Wyckoff. So my home is in this world. Why did Peter say this world is not my home? Well, let me tell you about another place that might be our forever home. And all of these things can happen for sure, and they're hard, but we have a forever home waiting for us someday. That is perfect. Because someday if we love Christ and we have asked Jesus to forgive us of our sins and all of those, um, all of that re on a relationship that we have with him, someday we will live with him forever in eternity. Now that might not be soon, it might be later, but still, this place where we live is only temporary. It is a great place to live. The earth is wonderful and it's full of so many good things. We can be so thankful for them. Of course, there will be hard times, but we always know that there is a place that is perfect and that place is heaven. So we know that this world, even though it's our home for now, it's not our home forever because we have a forever home. How can we choose to face hard times in our life knowing that our hope is in Jesus? Uh, we have a hope right? Because other people might face hard times and not realize they have Jesus that they can talk to or that they have someone like Jesus who can forgive their sins and they can have a good relationship with. But we know that, right? So when you have friends or family that are going through something hard, you can encourage them. You don't have to say, oh, that's not too hard or anything like that because it's a hard time for them, right? That we can say that we have Jesus and that he listens to us when we pray and he answers our prayers and and we have a relationship with him and we have the hope and the promise of eternity with him forever okay we're going to go see what pastor Brian has now a very tricky question a very tricky question and I love the tricky questions because I like to hear what pastor Brian says for an answer Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Xavier from Newman, Georgia asks, If God is all powerful and in control, why doesn't he just make life easy for everyone? Great question, Xavier. You know, in today's Bible story, we saw that Peter was encouraging believers who faced persecution. And it's really understandable that we would ask, well, why would God allow any of his children to undergo persecution or even difficulty in life? And that really makes us think that, you know, life can be difficult, can it? I know you guys are just kids and sometimes people look at you and think, man, your life is so easy. And we know it can be challenging at times. School can be hard. Uh, it can be hard to have some friendships and sometimes our friends hurt us. Sometimes getting along with our, our brothers or sisters or our parents can be difficult. And, and we go through harder things in life as well. The truth is that we all live in a world affected by sin and life can be really difficult. And yes, God could make life easy for us. But that might not be as good as it sounds because sometimes what is difficult is really best for us because something difficult, some kind of trial or a difficult situation helps us to grow and it helps us to turn to God for help and comfort. If life were all comfortable and easy, I think we wouldn't learn to trust in God. We'd learn to trust in ourselves or take God for granted. So sometimes easy is not the best, the most loving thing God can do for us 
is put us in a situation where life is difficult. Think about Jesus. His life was not easy, was it? But it was the best. And if God didn't spare Jesus from hardship, why would he spare you and me from hardship? God loves Jesus. He allowed him to suffer for a reason. He loves us. And sometimes life can be difficult for a reason as well. So here's a question back for you. How can suffering or persecution bring you closer to God? Welcome back one more time. We have been talking about hard times and there might be times in your life where times aren't hard. Maybe things are going okay for you, uh, but you see other people and maybe they are experiencing hard times and you think, besides saying nice words, what else could I possibly do? Well, one thing that we're doing in in-person Kids Church today is we are packaging some care packages. So what we are doing is taking a large Ziploc bag, and this might be something that you can think to do at home. Because if you are know someone who is having a hard time, you could do this. Or maybe if you're out and you're uh, walking and you see someone who might be living on the street or someone who is um, having a, a, a difficult time with employment and things, maybe giving them a little bit of a care package like this will make a bit of difference. It's not going to solve all the problems, but it does tell somebody, I care about you and Jesus cares about you. So we're making simple care packages um, and you could do this at home if you want. All I have is a, a gallon Ziploc bag and what you can do is fill it with whatever things you feel like could be special for someone. Even simple things. So in mine, we're going to start, we're just going to put a small bottle of water um, in there just to make it so that somebody has this for in case they need it, okay? Maybe a nice healthy snack. So I have some nuts I'm gonna put in it for a healthy snack. Other things that you can put in here are maybe some tissue, little small tissue packets. I have some hand sanitizer spray that I'm gonna put in here. I'm gonna put in a small package of tissues. All of those things can go in here just to tell a person, I'm thinking about you, and here's just a small thing for me to show you. Here's some lip balm. Here are some tissues. Here's a small package of things and say, I care about you. Now we're packaging these uh, here with the kids, but you can make yours at home. And we're also putting in a little card that says on there, Jesus loves you. Because the most important gift we can give to anybody isn't a care package. That's a nice thing. But the most important gift we can give to someone is the fact that we can tell them about Jesus, that Jesus can be their savior. He can forgive their sins. He can take away all of the bad things in their life and give them a new life in him and they can spend eternity with him forever. Well, that's the great news. That's called the gospel, the good news. So when we're here on earth though, we need to do some fun, nice things for people to show people we care, show people Jesus in our lives. We can use our words to tell them. We can give them some things to show them. We can lend a hand to help them. And so when other people are going through hard times, if we show them who Jesus is by how we act, their hard time might be a little bit easier. Cornerstone Kids, thanks so much. If you want to make a care package at home, I would love to see it. You can send me pictures if you make one at your house, and you can send me pictures at kids at cornerstonenj.org and have it e your parents email me pictures. I would love to see them. And I hope you have a great week. And even though hard times might come, we know that we have a God who loves us very much and he will be with us no matter what. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. I've got the joy oh, oh, down in my heart. I've got the joy oh, oh, down in my heart. I've got the joy oh, oh, down in my heart and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Got the J-O-Y deep inside I try to keep it in but I can't hide The love that you have given me I just want the world to see that You're the only one who makes me smile I don't worry cause I'm your child Every day I look to you You 
you give me joy that's breaking through I've got the joy down in my heart I've got the joy down in my heart I've got the joy down in my heart and the joy of the Lord is my strength yeah J-O-Y, deep inside I try to keep it in, but I can't hide The love that you have given me I just want the world to see that You're the only one who makes me smile I don't worry, cause I'm your child Every day I look to you You give me joy that's breaking through I've got the joy down in my heart down in my heart, I've got the joy Down in my heart, and the joy of the Lord is my strength, yeah I've got the joy. 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 I've got the J O Y deep inside. I try to keep it in, but I can't hide the love that you have given me. I just want the world to see that you're the only one who makes me smile. I don't worry, cause I'm your child. Every day I look to you. You give me joy that's breaking through. I've got the joy down in my heart. I've got the joy down in my heart. I've got the joy down in my heart. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. I've got the joy down in my heart. I've got the joy down in my heart. I've got the joy down in my heart. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. 